Speaker, Margaret Glasgow here. Look, um, at the outset, before I launch into what I have to say, I understand it would require planning permission to re uh, remove the uh, current uh, Derry Bryan uh, wind generators, and I personally will be objecting to that planning permission, so I will, and take it as far as I possibly can. I disagree with uh, some of what the last speaker said. We're not talking about ignoring the law, we're talking about changing a law. Uh, so we've heard today a very detailed and valid argument from my colleague Senator Michael McDool and Senator Boying. Nothing in today's motion runs counter to the programme for government. In fact, it's entirely in keeping with the ideology. We have a very ambitious uh, targets, particularly in relation to wind energy. Not to mention the commitment we've made to data centres. It's a massive and unenviable task, particularly in relation to offshore wind energy. We do, uh, we do not have enough ports to transport materials. The government should be looking, or should I say, uh, to use the lovely word striving that's something you should be very familiar with, to do everything it can in order to maximise our wind energy output. There is an irrational view that underpins so much in Irish politics. The opposition is never allowed to have a good idea. If you think about it for a second, it's one that logically makes no sense, as it's one that flies in the face of the function of the Shannon. Why were we set up? What's our raison d'etre? The approach underpins much of our politics. What am I about to say is relevant to this debate, but in the Sun on Monday, in my head-to-head -head against Minister O'Gorman, uh, which you should all read, especially those of you in government, I pointed out that all of the criticism the government are now getting for the referenda uh, were avoidable. But because solutions were proposed by the opposition, they were ignored in favour of running the referendums on International Women's Day. That was the priority and to hell with anything else. I, I would say we're seeing something of a similar tonight. A perfectly good bill being rejected because it has been tradition not to enact anything from the opposition. I'd be surprised if there are many, in, uh, many government senators in this chamber uh, that know uh, Sorry, I wouldn't be surprised if there were many government senators in this chamber that know this is a good bill. Indeed, uh, Senator Coyne, when he spoke there, there over the last few minutes, showed some very positive signs as to what should be done. Uh, if you're uncertain about the legal aspects, wouldn't it make sense to test this in court, or at least run it by the Attorney General and the Department of Justice, uh, and amend aspects if you're not sure about it? One of the main reasons why I'm convinced that the opposition to this motion is based on nothing else other than the fact that it's an opposition amendment is due to the fact that I don't see how tearing down this makes any sense at all. Uh, I would encourage, Minister, that you go and look at the site if you haven't already seen it. Um, because the site is an incredibly well put together site. Anyway, I'll conclude my speech by asking you to determine uh, not, uh, to not accept the opposition amendment that you are prepared to flush 200 million euros down the toilet. Are you so determined to not accept the bill that you are prepared to risk blackouts and then when people ask who's responsible, they'll look at you? Do you, do you seriously want to be, your legacy to be one uh, that has so many problems the, when the country, uh, in, the, in this country at the moment, when we run the parliamentary matters in this way. You have a chance to avoid the possibility today. I'd ask you to deviate from the irrational, irrationality that plagued so much of our politics, and at the very least consider this bill. You should allow this bill to go through second stage, and at committee stage we should find ourselves in a situation where we can iron out the difficulties that are there. I cannot believe I cannot believe that we are going to send large machinery into Derry Brine to tear down what is a perfectly serviceable wind uh, energy generating station. It is absolutely absurd. You talk about the mudslide and the turf slide there was there before. You bring heavy machinery onto that site because I have walked that site along with my Kelly colleagues. You bring heavy machinery onto that site and I promise you, you will see mudslides like what you have never seen before. 
before. It is an absolute nonsense. So it is. It's no wonder people turn against Europe when they see things like this going on. We need to stand up as a proud sovereign state and declare that we are capable of managing our own issues. Go back to the courts if that's what it takes and establish what is a wind farm and get it generating electricity. That's what we needed to do. If you go down to that part of the world, what, what we're talking about is feeding uh, finance into the local economy. What we're talking about is retaining our own pride. There were mistakes made. Nobody is denying that. What we need to do is to learn from the mistake, go back and repair it. I agree with the last speaker on the issue of, of data centres. That is going to be a problem as we go forward. But it's like a lot of other things in this country. We tend to be very narrow in our view of things and to hell with the consequences. If that site, is, if you're determined to tear it down, believe me, planning permission is where we start. And I will be there objecting to it. And I sincerely hope the whole of East Galway join me in objecting to it. It makes absolutely no sense. Thank you. Thank Senator you. Cross